The days were hot. Fish died in the lake. Plants yellowed. Birds stopped singing. There was thunder, but no rain. You call this period the Great Ecological Catastrophe. I heard my mother's heartbeat as she carried me to Alphaville. People chased us. I remember her driving and bison running by. Then we reached the flooded city with refugees in rubber boats. Suddenly, I couldn't find Mama. I was scared and alone. I'll never know whether she died or abandoned me. I only remember the rockets leaving for Mars. That night, the fighting started. I ran deep into the forest. A she-wolf found me and raised me with her cops. People who didn't make it into the rockets were dying in combat and from the mutating environment. But we, the orphans and animals, didn't fight. Instead, together we adapted to nature that grew out of the rubble. Many moons passed, and then one day, some humans returned. They called themselves Martians. They flew around dressed in yellow. They went hunting and played golf. I would steal their golf balls for fun. It really upset them. But then one day, I found a dead Martian. I took off his helmet and put it on. There was music playing in it. After years of only speaking wolf, I listened to the Martian radio and learned human language again. After the group left, one full moon later, I was chasing a tasty bug when another spaceship with new Martians arrived. It soon became clear they were trouble. Greetings all you Tesla City Martians out there, you're listening to Radio Nostalgia from Mars. The show for those who miss a morning run in the park, slurping minestrone soup, sailing with the wind in their hair, singing in unison with thousands of people at a music concert, or smelling the coming rain. In other words, a show for the long lost days of Earth.
started off the show with Son of No One, a song I'm fairly certain resonates with many of us orphans of the earth out here in the stuffy depths of space. Speaking of stuffy air, please don't attempt to open portal windows to let some fresh air in. It's unbelievable that we have to mention this, but we're living in pressurized domes, people. Breathing recycled air is just the new normal. In totally unrelated news, the memorial of Baroness von Wullenschitt will be held in private and her family asks gold diggers and paparazzi to respectfully stay away from the funeral ceremony being held in the Section C cafeteria on deck 3 at 7pm dawn time. Alright, on with the show. On that note, it's time for another story. I look back at life on the open road and look forward to the long road ahead. Stories, memories, <gasps> the good old days, original sources, authentic tales, hope, inspiration, drama, radiance, like the moon. Crying while riding a Harley Davidson is the actual meaning of life. <laughs> I tried to recreate that thing here on the line. So I took a test of city delivery EVA for a spin on the Tanisha train, but it's like driving a donkey VR simulation. Ah. It made me miss riding my motorcycle, my jolene even more. At 35, for 30 days in the blistering heat of July, I took a 4,600 ah. mile trip across America on my motorbike. Ah. We set off from California, we zigzagged up the country, we covered 18 states all the way up to New York City where I was to take over my father's company. During the trip, the biggest surprise for me was how much of my thinking was practical. Even banal, I just focused on staying alive at 70 miles an hour on the two wheels with crazy wings buffeting me in all directions. So while my mind was this constant barrage of compulsive thoughts, those thoughts were generally practical. Like, how do I get to that destination before dark? Am I drinking enough water? Am I hydrating? The bigger picture stuff of why am I doing this and what is life about anyway didn't come until later. We started the trip But aside from this high-minded idealism, life has no meaning. Because of these damn EVA suits, there's no wind on the highway here. No open air solitude that makes you feel one with the world like back on Earth. On Mars, even if you manage to get outside and still trapped in a bubble of your own stale air, no matter where you go, isolation is permitted to you. Unlike the open road, it's an experience of void, a wholeness. There's no dancing asphalt in the heat, and no neon lit diners, and 2 a.m. omelets with green bell peppers, and yellow cheddar with a side of burnt hash browns, greasy bacon, and black coffee. Instead, there's this barren rock, and strictly monitored oxygen levels in sterile domes. We live in bubbles within bubbles. I admire how far we've come and how resilient we are, but I wonder. Just maybe we're just fooling ourselves. Just like during my epic ride, we've mostly figured out the banal questions about water and food and sanitation, and now the greater questions are human. What are we really doing? What is our future? And what will the meaning of life be for my kids?
Alejandro. ¿Qué? El bebé no es suyo. I crouched near three members of your Martian expedition. The rest of your group were out in the field. I hoped to make friends, but when you saw me, you froze. Stopped picking plants and whispered among yourselves. You seemed very scared and confused. Amazed that I could breathe without a suit. You rushed towards me, so I ran. You really thought you could hunt me down? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
some upbeat groups for some upbeat news. As you may well know, the board of directors have founded a club for going on exploratory return visits to Earth. A primary expedition launched several years ago and Tesla City authorities are proud to announce that the secondary expedition, a select group of our eminent board members, has arrived on Earth in the vicinity of Alpha. The purpose of the expedition is to research, collect samples and conduct measurements of the air, water and soil to establish toxicity levels back on Earth. Of course, our intrepid Tesla City leaders will use the opportunity to squeeze in again at all. Nothing beats Earth's gravity, and urban rubble covered in nature makes for a challenging course. So let's wish them the best of luck. I ran, avoiding the nets, the same ones you used on my wolf brothers and sisters. This whole hunt was for so-called research purposes, to see if humans could return here one day. But even with jetpacks, you still couldn't navigate our new terrain. I am a nimble earthling, while you need so much gear just to stay alive. Welcome back all you Martians out there, you're tuned to Tesla City's number one radio station for music, stories, news and views related to Earth, reminding us all that even out here on Mars, one fact remains, we still circle around the same old sun.
people and their families. A friendly reminder, anyone attempting to opt out of their randomly assigned Martian duties will have their water privileges reduced and anyone paying a proxy to fill in will be excluded from all club activities for a Martian month, which is much longer than you think it is. So do your part and do it with heart.
Oh yeah, it's time for another episode of Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Any soul now, we're hoping to hear from our intrepid Earth explorers who are currently working hard right now collecting botanical, animal and geological samples to test the viability of us returning back to Earth in the near future. I do hope they have time to catch a breath with all that hard work they're doing for us. MCAIT there proving to be very popular amongst the youth of Mars these days in a track called Run Cup Run. Not enough space up here for that, <laughs> but well placed fitness zones do provide basic training simulation facilities, so why not drop by for a virtual run and update your bone density shots while you're there? Your Martian trio was getting tired. You should have realized Earth was not your planet anymore. This wasn't the homecoming you were expecting at all. Enraged, only the captain went on with the pursuit. For him, this turned into an obsessive safari hunt. But he was also exhausting himself as I lured him deeper into the forest.
Turbo the NATO. There's the green flashlight. What are you doing here? Who invited him?
Helmet. Together with my wolf brothers and sisters, we ate the Martian. Bruised and tired, but with a full stomach, I went on. I found myself in an industrial area when I saw a tiny spaceship crash land in the distance. Eventually, I would meet the lonely Martian that came out of that spaceship. Greetings, Radio Nostalgia from Mars fans. As you, our loyal listeners, already know, our friend. Possibilities for establishing a base there to study changes to the planet and investigate the viability of regular returns. Great news for us all who are hoping to go back on vacation to show our children what we so dearly cherish and miss. As of this episode, we have not yet heard from anyone back on Earth, but they must be very busy with important research and are unable to reach out to our listeners for secrets of earthly life and atmosphere due to their intense work. They must be enjoying themselves immensely, being back in real gravity. Can you complain then? Okay, enough to chatter. Let's get something on the platter. <laughs>
Places we meet here. Martian from the crash ship was different from you. He was alone, and he flew, and walked slowly. He would sit in one spot for a long time, and then curl up and sleep right there, in the open. When I finally approached him, he didn't try to chase me. He took off his helmet and extended his open hand. So Charlie and I became friends. Charlie told me stories about Earth before the great ecological catastrophe, about his life in Alphaville, how he became a pilot for the mission to Mars. He didn't know anything about my mama. After
After years of guilt and sadness, Charlie felt he was finally home, although our mutant environment was slowly killing him. Charlie taught me to read. Biology, medicine, physics, history, literature. I devoured it all. I taught him to hunt. He taught me about machines. Oh, he also told me not to eat humans. I showed him how to communicate with animals. We spent a lot of time in the ASA building, the place where his rocket launched during the evacuation to Mars. It brought up so many memories. Then one day, an old drone spotted us flying around and attacked us. Radiant nostalgia from Mars. Greetings and salutations, all you Tesla City citizens out there. The talk of the town at the moment is that Charlie, our national hero, pilot of the Mars mission, has escaped in a private golf club wasteland shuttle belonging to our esteemed CEO. Come back 
to me Come back, come back Come back, come back Come back, come back To me Twój dom daleko od domu Radio Nostalgia z Marsa News of Charlie's departure has sent a shockwave to the city and stories have been pouring in. Let's hear one now. I don't know what I'm doing up here on Mars, to be honest. Luck of the draw, I guess. I really didn't want to come, but my company insisted on one way to Mars. It was a single ticket too, bright and more seats didn't work. So I was forced to leave my family behind. That's awful. I would have preferred to go under the waves with my wife and a kid. Better than eking out a lonely existence in this hellhole. <laughs> the company no longer even exists. What a joke. I gave up everything to end up scrubbing air filters and crawling on my belly through endless ducts. We're not really allowed to talk about it, but a few of the ships didn't make it. And I often wish I was on one of those that fell back into the atmosphere and burned the cinders in the sky. Anyway, that's quite it all. I did find a new hobby of sorts, crawling around below the city. I started messing about with the acoustics in the access tunnels. Some of them are miles long and just about any sound down the becomes beautiful and haunting. I'm no Pavarotti, but I did find a new joy in singing to my kids. I feel that they're with me sometimes. Picking We're losing him. Not on my watch!
Charlie told me you wouldn't leave for Mars before you got us. Supplies were running low, and you were afraid to return to Mars without the captain. You'd face the Tesla City Tribunal. All dreams of promotion would vanish. And the riddle of my immunity would remain a mystery. But Charlie was growing pale and weak, so I hid him safely in Alphaville, and I ran back to your group to use myself as bait. Hello all you Martians out there, welcome to another episode of Radio Nostalgia from Mars. So we've been receiving quite a few lullabies and children related stories since a rumor started spreading that our team has spotted a child living in the vicinity of Alphaville, which of course is impossible. Rest assured, this is a complete falsehood. What has been officially confirmed by the Tesla City authorities is that Charlie has escaped to Earth and landed safely, but they are worried that without supplies he won't survive more than a few weeks. Our researchers on Earth are definitely trying to reach him. Opening to Soul's show, a song often requested by Charlie himself. This one's for you, sir. Keep safe out there. You're tuned to Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Like fireflies, bombs fly like moths. Tickets are relevant. Go isolated. Minds go to sea.
listening to Radio Nostalgia from Mars. Before we go on with the show again, the rumors of a feral kid playing in the ruins of Earth are pure fabrication, and any further dissemination of such misinformation is punishable by law under the newly formed Destabilization of Public Morale Act passed unanimously at an emergency Tesla City Board meeting two souls ago. <laughs> rumors aside, Obviously, the possibility of new life on Earth is exciting to us all. But don't forget that though the sun may be smaller from Mars than from Earth, it's right here on Mars. Keep that adrenaline pumping, that joyful life jumping. Four to the floor, who could ask for more? You're tuned to Radio Nostalgia from Mars, music from the last days of Earth.
for our trap. Charlie is here at the stadium, like a chieftain among the feral children of Alphaville. Earth doesn't belong to you, those who abandoned it, but to us, who grew up in the rubble you left behind. Do not return. This planet will not be colonized. It is not your playground, your lab, or your property. You will not take its resources to Mars. We, the barbaric orphans, will not be your tools for sustaining the futile experiment of your oxygen-deprived civilization on Mars. Do not come again in your spaceships, slugging your weak bodies in those silly suits. If we spot you again in these landscapes, we will devour you all. What you on Mars see as the post-apocalypse is now our home. The future of Earth belongs to us.